Hi guys and welcome back to All Things Korean. In today's video, I thought I would show you what it's like to attend a typical Korean wedding. And I'm not talking about those traditional ceremonies where you wear hanbok and everything. I'm talking about the average Korean wedding, which is very westernized but still very Korean in its own way. A few weeks ago, I attended my best friend's wedding and I managed to get a few clips from there. Not the whole thing, but just you know snippets of it so I can show you what it's like. So if you ever have any plans to attend a Korean wedding and you don't want to feel lost when you're there, or if you're just curious to know what the wedding culture is like in Korea, then please keep watching. So the first part of a wedding, as a guest, would be to receive the invitation. If you're a friend of the bride or groom, they will usually treat you to a meal. They'll take you out to give you the invitation in person. They'll be the ones paying for the meal, which is a nice gesture because as a guest, you still have quite a bit of money to spend just by attending. If it's an office or something, usually uh, the bride or groom will you know, give out the invitations and you know, include some maybe like snacks or little tidbits to go with it. It's never just the invitation, there always has to be some sort of like food or like a small gift involved. For most Korean weddings, there's no need to RSVP. You either attend or you don't because there aren't any like designated seats and you'll see why in a moment. Now, most weddings in Korea take place in what's called a wedding hall. It's just a venue that is designated to hold weddings. Most of these buildings are huge and they usually host like several weddings at once. And if there is one word I can use to describe typical Korean weddings, it would be efficient. Korean weddings are super quick, super efficient, and very easy to attend. So the first thing you do when you arrive at a wedding hall is to find your venue. The floor of the wedding hall will be written on the invitation. So you look at that, get to the venue, and you will first walk into a lobby area where the immediate family members of the bride and groom are standing by the entrance and greeting all the guests. And one thing to note is that there is like a reception desk when you walk into the lobby. Um, there's one desk for the bride and one desk for the groom. Now, in Korean weddings, you don't do wedding gifts. I think it's like this in most Asian cultures. But instead of gifts, we just give packets of money. That's the wedding gift. So when you walk up to the reception desk, there's a stack of envelopes. You take one, you put the money in, and you write your name on the envelope. And you also write your name in the guest book. This is so that the bride and groom can keep track of who gave how much to the wedding. It's actually really efficient. If you know how much someone gave to your wedding, then you know how much you should give when that person gets married. Or, you know, it's, it's just a, it's a good gauge of how much money to give in certain situations. Korea is a big money giving culture. And here's a quick tip on how much money is appropriate um, in 2020. This is my personal opinion, but I think it's a general rule of thumb. So if you're like a, not exactly a close acquaintance, maybe if you're just like a colleague or something, then I think the starting point these days is around 50,000 won, which is about $50-ish. And then the amount would go up depending on how close you are to that person. So once you submit the envelope, for my case, it was the bride side, um, they ask you how many people you're with, you know, how many guests, and they will give you the meal vouchers accordingly. So unless you pay some sort of envelope, you probably won't be able to get a meal voucher. Once you get that out of the way, if you're an acquaintance of the bride like I am, then you visit something called a shinbu degishil, and that is the bride's waiting room. In this little room, the bride sits on a beautiful little chair and greets all the guests and takes pictures. This is a short window of time where you can chat for a little bit, you can comment on how beautiful the bride looks on her big day, take a few pictures, you know, take a few selfies like I did, and yeah, that's it. So after I took my pictures with my friend, I walked over into the chapel to get ready for the actual wedding. It's custom for the bride's guests to sit on the right side and the groom's guests to sit on the left side. 
And then from this point on is the actual ceremony. It lasts for about 20 to 30 minutes and all you need to do is sit and enjoy and clap along with everyone else. I didn't get too many videos um, from the actual ceremony because it would be weird if I was just holding up my phone for the whole time. But uh, let me just show you a few scenes. So the wedding always starts with the two mothers walking down the aisle. It's not tradition, but like these days, it just so happens that the bride's mother is dressed in like a pink or reddish hanbok, and the groom's mother is dressed in like a bluish hanbok. Gender colors, I don't know. Anyway, they walk down the aisle together and they light a candle. I think this comes from like a traditional Korean thing, I don't know, but I think the candle lighting ceremony is for like a, is to is in hopes for a bright future for their children or something like that so the mothers do that they bow to each other they bow to the guests and then the groom walks in and then the bride walks in with her father after all of that is like you know the usual ceremonial things you know there will be speeches someone might sing a song and like an exchanging of vows i noticed that in a lot of korean weddings it's not like those heartfelt vows that you like say to each other like mini speeches um they read off of like a folder or like a, a piece of paper that they read together and it's kind of written like in a contracty kind of tone uh, which i found really interesting but um they read the vows together they, they exchanged rings and there's also a part where the bride and groom go to each of the parents and then they bow to you know thank them for everything they've done and then there's a brief moment where you hug all of the parents and for me it's just a very heartwarming part of the ceremony and I think most brides like kind of cry at this point I don't know if my friend did though I didn't get a very good view so like I said, the ceremony takes about 20 to 30 minutes. Once it's done, the bride and groom, they walk back down the aisle and you know, the whole thing with like throwing petals or rice or whatever. And then, you know, they kiss and take pictures and whatnot. After this ceremony, there's one last thing. And this is another part of the wedding that takes about 20 to 30 minutes. And that is photo taking time. So first, the bride and groom, they take their pictures at the altar. And then it's picture taking time with a family. So they'll do like the immediate family of the bride, immediate family of the groom, and then they'll do a big picture with the extended family. And then after that, all the friends and colleagues of the couple will come stand in one huge group and take a big group photo. And this is where the bouquet throwing also takes place. And very interesting, Korean weddings have a bouquet throwing culture, but it's not throwing the bouquet into a group of unmarried women. In Korea, the bride selects one person to catch the bouquet and she just throws it to that particular person which is really strange, but that's just the way Korean weddings are. And in this particular wedding, I was the one who caught the bouquet. Even though technically I married already, I was supposed to have my wedding in October after hers, even though you know that I canceled that because of COVID. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is I was uh, standing there in front of all the friends and then the photographer was taking like a, a shot of the exact moment where I would catch the bouquet. But in this case, I actually dropped it which was, uh, yeah. So after all the picture taking is done is when you finally get to go eat. So the reception hall is basically just one big buffet and it's not reserved for just your wedding guests. It's for the guests of all the weddings that take place in that building. So, you know, you can just go in and sit wherever you wanna sit and have your meal and that's it. For this particular wedding, because of the current COVID situation, we were required to wear masks and plastic gloves when we were getting our food, and we could only take them off when we were actually eating at our seats. By this time, the bride and groom will have changed into a hanbok, which is like the reception outfit, I guess, and then they will walk around and thank all the guests personally for coming. And after the bride and groom reach your table, that's when it's safe to go home. So all in all, the entire attending of a wedding 
takes about like two hours tops. There's 30 minutes for the ceremony, 30 minutes for picture taking, and maybe like an hour for your meal. It is definitely not one of those like full day events you get in other countries. I've only attended Korean weddings before, so I don't know what it's like actually to attend other culture weddings. But yeah, this is what Korean weddings are like. I hope you found this video interesting, even though it's not really a language related video. And if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to All Things Korean if you want more videos on Korean culture, but mostly language. Then I'll see you in the next one. 다음 영상에서 만나요.